So over, over 30 years ago, well over 30 years ago, I got a job working in the Bucks County Playhouse. Yeah! Uh, it's a nice little summer theater, and we were, there were a star package then, so the first show I did was um, Joseph and the Dreamcoat starring Jimmy Osmond, and then we did on Exertix, you can see Forever Stein, Diana Canova. Judy, Judy Canova, our mother had just died, we chatted about that. And then we did um, uh, How to Succeed with Ron Palillo, remember Horshack from Welcome Back Cotter? We became a dear friend until he passed away. And then um, we did uh, Guys and Dolls with Joey Travolta and Donna Pascal. Or Donna Pascal from Saturday Night Fever and Angie. And then we did The Best Little Whorehouse. Now, The Best Little Whorehouse was originally going to star um, Ed Cookie Burns, or Cookie, Cookie, give me your phone. If you're of a certain age, you remember that. Um, I don't. Uh, and, and Barbie Benton, remember Barbie Benton? And, and we were, I was so excited to meet Barbie Benton. They both pulled out for various reasons. And so to speak. Uh, thank you. I'm here all week. Um, and then um, we ended up getting instead uh, Sheila McRae. I was so excited to work with Sheila McRae because I used to watch The Honeymooners. You all remember in the late 60s, remember the, the, the scene with the camera with all the, the water going in the water? You remember that? Um, and uh, Sheila and I totally hit it off. We had a wonderful time. Every night after the show, she would do her act and talk about, um, just, just after, after the curtain call, she'd stay on stage and talk to the audience. Both Jackie Gleason and, her, and, and Gordon, her late husband, Gordon McRae, were still alive. She would talk about them and tell stories, and we really hit it off. And then I told her that I used, I used to live in Encino, Encino, California, in the San Fernando Valley. And she said, oh, we used to live in Encino. We kept chatting about it. And then one day, I, I brought up my address, 16670 Boston Drive. She said, 16670, that's, that's my address. That's where we live, too. I was like, really? wow. So the following year, I went to see the opening night of Merrily Roll Along at La Jolla Playhouse, starring our next guest, my good friend. And I went up to her at the party, and I said, so, I got to know, I'm friends with your mother, and she tells me we used to live in the same house. And she had said, Oh, my mother makes up these stories. <laughs> but, but the more we, we talked about it, the more we said, well, we really did live in the same house. I talked to Heather, and I was like, yeah, I remember that house. We did live in the same house. Crazy. Um, and, and I'm going to bring her up, because we've become dear friends, and I played her show. She does a, a, a show, a cabaret show, all around the world. We played for her a lot, um, based on growing up as the daughter of Hollywood royalty, the daughter of Gordon and and Sheila McRae. And Heather, you know, just won an Obie. She was brilliant in Come Back Little Sheba. And she's so excited she won an Obie. It's a wonderful thing. And um, I'm, just, I'm gonna bring her up here for God's sakes. Heather McRae, Obie Award winner to Heather McRae. has to help the people up the stage on <laughs> Well, they took the railing away. It's dangerous. I've, I've sat here a lot, and the railing, some people have gone flying into the audience, you know, on occasion. But. <laughs> so we go back a long way, and there was some other story. Oh, yeah, so when I played Heather's show at 50... When I shaped... Menopause, sorry. <laughs> when I played Heather show at 59th, 59th Street a number of years ago, my parents, my whole family, a lot of us came to see the show, and afterwards we went up to say hello to Sheila, who was in the audience, and Sheila said, oh, the Levines, I love the Levines, and my parents looked at me and said, do we know Sheila? <laughs> <laughs> no, we knew Sheila. Right? So, now we do. So, I'm going to let you lead now. We, you know, Heather, we need to talk about, she has a brilliant arranger who worked on her act originally. They came over to my apartment, sat on the floor, and we just pulled all of Gordon McRae's When I was putting together a show about my father, we decided that we would just stick to the songs from his films, because a lot of people probably know this, but he had a huge recording career on Capitol Records and several radio shows, and it was there was just so much material to choose from. So who did I call? Of course, Michael, who has every song in the world. And we did. We sat there and went through all the songs, and. Um, we put this together, uh, my, my original musical director, Mark Nather. But I just want to say, I have so much fun with Michael. Michael and I have toured around the country doing songs for my father, which is a tribute to my dad, Gordon. And I was talking to somebody before, and I was saying, one time we went in 2006, I think, and we did a show in Palm Springs at a gay resort. Clothing optional at the pool. <laughs> it was so hot. It was, it was around. It was around. Around September. September. It was, meaning it was only 109 oh. instead of you know. 
it but, was but so hot. They saw that they had the sprinkler, all the sprinklers on for the people. Yeah, yeah. when I was going to Palm Springs in the 60s as a teenager, they didn't have mist machines everywhere. But now, but, now when you go there, there's mist, and they had mist while, and I sang outside. Remember, it was like at a barbecue I bar. I know, I remember. I had to sing outside, and they had mist blowing on us throughout the whole show. But the rest of that trip was wonderful because Heather had me take her all around Palm Springs where she used to live and where yeah. we, she went to, used to the fancy place where she used to go yeah. for lunch. And then we went to Joshua Tree. We went to Joshua Tree. Walked all around there. We had just a wonderful yeah. trip. I sat in the car. It was way too hot for me. Michael got out and took pictures. <laughs> I love it. But we've had a lot of fun. We've gone to Florida. We went dolphin watching. He's the greatest person to travel with, Michael Levine, because he's so much fun. He's a great musician, a great artist in every way, but even more importantly, he is a great person, and I love you so much, so I'm glad to be here with you. I know you're going to remember this song, a lot of you. I'm discontented with homes that are rented, so I have invented my own. Darling, this place is a lover's oasis where life's weary. What is the word? Chase is unknown. Sorry, I'm getting old. Far from the cry of the city, the flowers pretty caress the streams. Cozy to hide in, to live side by side in. Don't let it abide in my dreams. Pig should be upon your knee just t for two and two for t just me for you and you for me alone nobody near us to see us or hear us no friends or relations on weekend vacations we won't Tiny 
deadly taster for me. <laughs> Can you see how happy we will be? songwriters over the years and gotten to have personal relationships with them and there's a team a team that you've done a number of projects with I want, I want to talk about particularly and I'll let, I'll let you talk about them because I know that they did that the Wyatt Earp musical right? Why don't you talk for a while? I'm tired. We're talking specifically about Amanda McBroom and Michelle Browerman. Wonderful. So Amanda McBroom you may know wrote The Rose. The Rose. She wrote The Rose. The Rose. And a lot a great of wonderful song. other songs. Funny songs, poignant songs, every possible song. And uh, they wrote a little thing with Michelle Browerman. Uh, well, they wrote, they wrote I, wrote, I Married Wyatt Earp. Is that the two of them? Or is that what no, that Michelle Browerman wrote that. that but, uh, Amanda and Michelle have been working together for many years. And I actually met Amanda McGroom in 1977 when I was doing the play Vanities in Palm Springs. And uh, she uh, sat on the couch one day. And we'd all been in the hot tub after the show. And she was naked. And she sat on the couch and started playing songs. I was like, Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> but I had no idea she was such a great uh, singer-songwriter. And Michelle, you go back even farther. Right? Michelle Browerman, I met through Amanda, and she became my very first musical director in California. I started playing a little club there called the Blah Blah. So um, I know Blah Blah Cafe, it's Studio City. Al Jarreau started there, it's no longer there. So I've been friends with them for years, and you know, over the years I've added different songs of theirs to my repertoire. And I was putting together my second solo CD, um, the first one, of course, was songs for my father, about my dad. And my second solo CD is called I Choose Love. And so I called Amanda and Michelle and I said, can you send me some new songs? And they sent me this next song, which they wrote for the movie of the same name as the song. It was never used in the movie. The movie is called Hope Floats with Sandra Bullock. But I was lucky enough to receive this song and I was the first person to record it. So, this is by Michelle Browerman and Amanda McBroom. Sometimes you feel the rain will keep falling forever. You're washing away like a lost little crepe paper boat. You think that you're lying
angel on your shoulder oh blows and if you reach out your arms and Forever known from now on as Obie Award winner, Evan McRae.